Thank you. Well, I don't know if you remember, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, at the end of the service, it was after um, Raj had preached, uh, Lorraine was leading the service, and she gave some homework, I don't know if people remember that, she gave some homework to, through the week, to read the book of Ephesians. By the way, sorry, I should say, we, because of time, we won't be having somebody up here uh, translating to Nepalese. Um, but if there is anyone who has difficulty following, um, yeah, if you could make sure that you kind of translate a little bit for, for them to help them to follow. Um, so the homework given uh, was to, during the week, to read the book of Ephesians. How many of you actually did that? Yeah, all of you, of you, okay, yeah, well done, well done. Well, I did, and uh, I want to thank you, Lorraine, because actually it was as a result of that um, that I've been given the word for today, the word that I want to share with you, because the very first day I started reading through Ephesians, um, I was actually just struck by uh, verse 3 of the very first chapter, and I kind of, I just really felt there was something in that, a message in that, that God wanted us to really get hold of. Um, and it kind of ties in with the theme that um, Evangel preached a few weeks ago on sons and, 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 and servants. And for those of you who have been following Bible studies, you'll know that we've been continuing that theme through the Bible studies. And I believe that this links in with that theme as well. So I'm quite excited about this. I know that some of the things, I'm going to keep it fairly short, I hope. Um, we don't have that much time anyway, so I'm not going into great detail. Um, and many of these things I know we have heard before. But we need to keep hearing them because Amen. we need to get them in our hearts. Very often we know things up here, but we don't always carry it in here all the time. We forget. And so we need to be reminded. It's all part of the renewing the mind. Right. So Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Can we just get up the first slide? We've got the, the scripture up there, which says... Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. And it was just that phrase, every spiritual blessing, that really kind of took hold of me. And I, just, I, that, I, that, I had that question in my mind. Okay, what are these spiritual blessings? What are these spiritual blessings that we have in Christ? Um, and uh, if you go on to read the rest of the chapter, many of those spiritual blessings are mentioned in the chapter, and we will come to that in a moment. But I just want to say one or two things, highlight one or two things by way of introduction to this. First of all, it's every spiritual blessing. Amen. Not just some, not just a few blessings, but we have every spiritual blessing. And it's for every one of us. It's not just for Paul who wrote this letter. It's not just for the believers in Ephesus to whom he wrote this letter. It is actually to every believer. We all have these spiritual blessings. Anyone who has received Jesus as their Lord and Saviour has these blessings. And it's not that we will have all these blessings, but it says he has blessed us. He's blessed us already. We already have these blessings. These blessings come from God the Father, first of all. God the Father is the originator and the source of every blessing that we have. But these gifts, they are all in Christ. In other words, we receive them only through our identification and our union with Christ. And the Holy Spirit is the executor who applies the work of Christ in our lives. An executor is someone who sees that the wishes of a deceased are fulfilled in a will. You know when somebody dies, they have a will. They write a will and they say that what they want to happen to their property and all their belongings. And that is somebody called an executor who sees that everything that this person put down in their will is followed. That the people who are supposed to receive the inheritance receive the inheritance. The Holy Spirit is like the executor. He's the one who works 
to make sure, to apply the work of Christ in our lives, and to make sure that we receive every spiritual blessing that we have, that we have been given in Christ. And I also want to highlight the fact that every one of these blessings is by grace. Anugraha. Is that right? Is that the Nepalese word? Anugraha. Okay. And the next slide. I, I really like this acronym. I just want to get across this acronym. A way of remembering what grace is, what it means. God's riches at Christ's expense. Amen. None of us deserve the gift of salvation and all the blessings that come as a result of that salvation. None of us can earn more of God's love. Salvation doesn't come through our works. It comes through faith in Jesus Christ and it is a free gift to everyone who wants to receive it. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, It is by grace that you have been saved. But it's um, I'm just going to read the whole verse. I think it's actually up there for you. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And some of us, and we've heard this from Evangel recently, that sometimes we, we receive this as a free gift. We receive salvation as a free gift. We know it's simply through our faith in Christ. But then we can fall back in to the trap of thinking we have to do this, we have to do that in order either to keep our salvation or in order to earn more of God's love. And we fall back into the works. And that, that actually is in Galatians chapter 3, verse 3, which says, Are you so foolish? After beginning with the Spirit, are you now trying to attain your goal by human effort? Again, we have to be careful that we don't fall back into the trap of thinking we need to earn God's love. God's love is a free gift and it's unconditional. We are securing God's love. And our works flow out of knowing who we are in Christ. So we do good works, but it comes out of the security of, of knowing God's love for us and having God's love in us. And it's the love of God which propels us, motivates us to do these good works. In the same way that Jesus' works flowed out from the knowledge of who he was as God's son. That is how God designed us to be. That the works that we do flow out of our security in Christ and his love. Uh, Chun preached uh, last week about preaching the gospel, the importance of preaching the gospel. And again, I just want to highlight that when we preach the gospel, it's out of love. It's not out of compulsion. It's not out of fear. It's out of love. Amen. Okay, so let's look at what some of these spiritual blessings are in Christ. First of all, number one, we are chosen. Okay, it was supposed to come up one at a time, but <laughs> never mind. Never mind. It's it's come. You've got a spoiler there. You've got all of them all together. Should each time you press it, should go. So anyway, number one. Number one, we are chosen. Chanieko, is that right? Chanieko, we're chosen. <laughs> Yahweh, or God, initially chose the Jews, i.e. the nation of Israel, to be his treasured possession. The initial blessing and promise was given to Abraham and all his seed, and we read about that in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible. But now, through Jesus, God has also called and chosen the Gentiles. In other words, everyone who's not a Jew. And you can read that in the book of Ephesians, verses 11 to 19 of that first chapter address this. And again, in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 11 to 18, it addresses this subject. We're not going to go into it in detail now because of time. But I just want to say that we read in Ephesians that this was always God's plan. He chose you before the foundation of the world. And it says that in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. He chose you before the foundation of the world. He chose you because he loves you. And he loves you with an unconditional love.
I don't know, some of you may have, have grown up where you felt that you weren't meant to be in the family. Sometimes you hear stories, sometimes I, I know somebody very close to me who was told that his parents nearly adopted, uh, nearly aborted him when they knew they had a child because they weren't ready to have a child. They didn't want a child at that time and they were considering abortion. Imagine how that would make that child feel. Yeah. Praise God they weren't aborted. But that can lodge something <coughs> in the spirit. I wasn't wanting. They didn't want me. Even my own testimony, even myself, I remember my mum telling me as I grew up that my dad, his first wife died, he'd had two children, two girls from his first marriage, but his first wife died when the children were very young. Sometime later he married my mum. My mum at that point didn't have children. She wanted a child. So my dad agreed to have another child. But my mum told me that my dad only really agreed to have another child because he knew she wanted one. So again, that gave me just the feeling, my dad didn't really want me. And then to make it worse, I discovered that because my dad already had two girls, he really wanted a boy. So I was then disappointed because I wasn't a boy. And I thought my dad was disappointed in me. And I think maybe growing up even that gave me just that sense that I wanted to earn my dad's love. He wasn't a very demonstrative sort of person either. He didn't talk about his love. He didn't express affection and emotion to people. So although I kind of knew he loved me, he didn't express it. And there was always a part of me trying to earn his love. Um, and I think I probably carried that over into my spiritual life as well. Trying to earn God's love or earn more of God's love. Um, you're not a mistake. Amen. Amen. You're not unwanted. Mm -hmm. Psalm 139 verse 14 says, You are wonderfully and fearfully made. God chose you. You're beautiful in his sight. He created you for a purpose. And he has a plan for your life. There are scriptures that back up each and every one of those. For time, we're not going to turn to them. But that is scripture. That is God's truth. That is God, God's word to you, to me. We're chosen. Secondly, we're adopted as God's children. We have heard that. We've heard that preached recently again. It's something that Ivan has been preaching to us. We're adopted. Abnegal, is that right? Abnegal. We're adopted. Understanding our position as children of God is key to knowing who we are in Christ. God is not only the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but he's also your father. Amen. He's my father. Amen. He's our father. Amen. Romans chapter 8, verse 15 says, We can now call him Abba, Father. You know the meaning of Abba? is Daddy or Papa. How intimate is that? Calling somebody Daddy or Papa. <laughs> Do you think of God as your daddy? And this adoption is a legal act, and one which cannot be reversed. You cannot lose your position as a child of God. And we've seen that in the story of the prodigal son. Yeah? No matter what the child did, the, 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 the prodigal son, he, he, he ran off. He left the father. And yet, the father welcomed him back, regardless of what he'd done. The son was still the father's son. And he was loved, still loved by the father. We've already heard that that is a picture of God's unconditional love for us. Your position as a child of God is secure, regardless of your behaviour. But if you truly love God, you will always come back to him. Like the prodigal son came back to the father. You will, always, you will always come back to him, repenting of your foolish ways, as we saw in that story of the prodigal son. And if you're adopted as a child, it means you're also an heir. 
The Bible says we are co-heirs with Christ. So we have the same inheritance as Christ. That's really another sermon. I'm not going to go there. But you may no longer have an earthly father. Or you may not have been the best example to you. But you have a father in heaven who loves you unconditionally. Thirdly, we're redeemed. Redemgario? Is that right? Redemgario. Redeemed. Yeah? Redemgario? No, maybe it's my pronunciation. Okay, is that right? <laughs> well, I hope you know how to translate it anyway. Uh, the Greek word refers the Greek word refers to the act of making full payment to free and enslaved person. Because our sins are forgiven, we are set free from the penalty of sin, Amen. which is eternal death and separation from God. And we're free to live holy and blameless in God's sight. And that's Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. We sing in that song, don't we? No longer slaves. No longer slaves. We've been set free. We've been bought as a price. The blood of Jesus paid that price for us. And going hand in hand with redemption is forgiveness. I'm a bit nervous to try my Nepalese now. Semagario? Do you understand that? Semagario? Forgiveness? Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. There are many scriptures which talk of our redemption, the forgiveness of sins. For example, Colossians chapter 1, verse 14. Forgiveness is at the heart of the gospel and Christ's teachings. Forgiveness is powerful. It has the power to set us free. Unforgiveness binds in chains. It's a burden, it's a heavy weight, and it's a trap. The thief on the cross, you remember the thief? The two thieves on the side of Jesus when Jesus was being crucified? One of the, one of the thieves recognized Jesus as the Son of God. And he received Christ's forgiveness. In those dying moments, he received Christ's forgiveness. Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. That thief had no opportunity to do any good works. He was saved purely by his faith in Jesus. Because we've been forgiven, we must also forgive. We must forgive others. And sometimes we need to forgive ourselves. Sometimes that's even harder. We beat ourselves up about stuff we've done. We need to forgive ourselves as well. If God's forgiven us, who are we to hold on to things? We need to forgive ourselves. And we need to forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. The Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 says, Forgive us as we have forgiven our debtors. I like the Passion Translation, which says, Forgive us the wrongs we have done, as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Fifthly, we're given understanding and revelation. Prakatikala? Is that right? Yes? I'll get a nod from that sugar. In verse 9, it says, God made known to us the mystery of his will. Now, the specific revelation mentioned here in this chapter in Ephesians uh, is regarding the Jews and the Gentiles and God's plan to unite both as one in Christ, which I already mentioned earlier on. Jews and Gentiles share equally now in the gospel of salvation and they come together to form one new family, united in Christ. You can also read that in Romans chapter 11. But God gives us wisdom, understanding and revelation on all matter of things. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17, Paul talks about the spirit of wisdom and revelation. What does he pray? He says, verse 17, he says, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. So God gives us a spirit of wisdom and revelation. First of all, so that we can know God better, so that we have hope, 
so that we know the riches of our inheritance and the power that is available to us. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 in the Passion Translation says, For our spiritual wealth is in him, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered, heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation and knowledge. Heaven's wisdom and knowledge is available to us. Each one of us, not just the preachers, not just the teachers who stand up here, but every single one of you is available. Amen. Psalm 25 verse 14 says, The Lord confides in those who fear him. And Amos chapter 3 verse 7 says, God does nothing without first revealing his plan to the prophets. But in the New Testament, every single one of us has the gift of prophecy. So God can reveal his plans to each and every one of us. Finally, we are marked with God's seal, the Holy Spirit. Is that right? Okay. We're marked with God's seal, the Holy Spirit. In the olden days, kings would seal, put a seal on a letter to show that it was a genuine document <coughs> straight from the royal hand. They'd have a, a ring and they'd have a, like a, a little thing on the ring and then they'd with wax, they would seal, put a seal, and the stamp from their ring would go on the letter, and it would prove that it was a genuine letter from the king, from the royal hand. The Holy Spirit is God's seal upon us. Amen. It's a sign to us and to others that we belong to God, Amen. that we're his children. The Passion Translation actually refers to it as being like an engagement ring, which is given to a bride. And you know in scripture also the parallel is drawn between us being the bride of Christ, yeah? the, we, we talked about the, the bride of Christ, and the Passion Translation takes that image and, and talks about the Holy Spirit being like the engagement ring, which is given. It's the first instalment of what is coming. But with the Holy Spirit comes a whole package. He is our counsellor. He's our guide, he's our comforter, and he leads us into all truth. In the Holy Spirit, but all the fruit of the Spirit, and you can read the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23, and I think they are up there actually, yeah. The verse is up there, the fruit of the Spirit. And we're not going to look at them now. Um, that would be, again, that would be another sermon. But, I'm just giving you a quick overview of all that we have available in Christ, the spiritual blessings and the package that comes with the Holy Spirit when we receive Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. So in addition to these, these things that I've mentioned already, that we're chosen, that we're adopted as God's sons and daughters, that we're redeemed, we're forgiven, we're given understanding and revelation, and we receive the Holy Spirit, all these things that we also receive with the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. And another time I would love to go more into the gifts of the Spirit. We move on to the next slide. These are the gifts of the Spirit that are mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. You can read them all there. And then on the next slide, there's actually some other gifts which are also mentioned in other parts of Scripture. There are 22 in all. We're not, again, we're not going to go there. But any one of us can operate in any one of these gifts. I want to draw to a close there. Um, but I just want to <coughs> read some lyrics from a song that came to me this morning. And I just feel it's appropriate. It's a song I think we have sung once or twice. Um, and I did ask Jim if it's possible maybe even to finish with a song. I don't know how he feels about that because I know they haven't had a chance to practice it. But I'll leave that to you. But um, let's. I just want to read you some of the lyrics. It's a song, Gyra. It says, I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. And uh, uh, 
later on it says, I'm already loved. I'm already chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved. More than I could imagine. And that is enough. Amen.